what we have here is a stock 1.0 Zip It Z2 kernel and Zip It, freshly unboxed. We're going to walk you through flashing and the new firmware features. So first, what we have is our microSD card formatted FAT32. It has the 2.6.29 R2 kernel renamed kernel.bin at the root directory and the autoflash software extracted to it. So we'll power down our zip it and insert the new kernel. Okay, so we go to reset defaults, restart the unit, force it to soft reboot. It resets and we should hopefully see a Linux logo pop up. Nice. Here we go. It's backing up the original kernel, flashing the new kernel, backing up the Wi-Fi firmware, and then it'll kick us out once it's done. This will take a minute. As you can see, it's got to flash the full 1.6 megabyte kernel, which is not a particularly fast operation. This is where the magic happens. If this goes wrong, or if we've got the wrong file on there, we'll have to solder on a serial header onto the motherboard of the Zip-It in order to try and reflash. Whether or not that's worth it for a $38 Zip-It, that's up to you. Looks like the flash successfully completed. We pop out the SD card here. Power on the Zip-It for the first time with bated breath and a terrified expression and success! The new firmware has been successfully flashed and is running off the internal MMC block 0 and not off the SD card. In the next part of the video we'll show you the new features on Aliosa 27's new userland kernel posted up at my site. Okay, after the end of the last video we reformatted the micro SD card with an EXT2 partition of about 1500 megs and a swap partition of about 300 megs. On the EXT3 partition we extracted the contents of the wireless plus audio plus mouse emulator image as described on the site. And with any luck, when we boot it now, we should boot into the full user land and new 2.6.29 R2 kernel. Ah, uh, we see lots of disk activity. That's a good sign. Hopefully when I extracted the image, I remembered to do it as root with correct permissions and structure. This will take a minute, even if it does work. Grab a cup of tea. And we are booted. Login is root. Double O T. No password is required if you remember my last image. And let's go ahead and start X. Okay, so we've booted up into Fluxbox with Start X. As you can see, mouse emulator is working well. You can click, select, etc. with the modifier keys. So now for the M player test, as you may know, the speaker is remarkably underpowered. So as you can see, I've hooked it up to an external speaker array. So for the purposes of this video, that you'll be able to hear everything. And I've put one of my personal collection MP3s on here. So let's try this out with M player, see how it goes. As you can see, it loads it up and starts playing just fine. Now this is a uh, 44 kilohertz file. I believe it to be about 20 megs. It's high quality, 128k bits per second. Not super high quality, but as you can tell, you know, no stutters, no problems, no memory issues. And in fact, while we're doing this, why don't we just uh, Alt Tab over to a new terminal, start us up another terminal. Maximize it, and how much free memory we have? Let's check that out. As you can tell, the MP3 continues to play in the background, and it looks like we've barely even touched swap at all. And this is while there's an MP3 playing in the background, so fantastic stuff, a lot of good stuff happening, especially mouse and audio. 
good stuff.